Hey, uh, well, we're working on a 1997 hot tub. That's what it says it was manufactured. Um, I've already had to replace this pump motor right here, which was, well, that was 300 and some dollars. And I've also replaced this GFI plug. As you can see, this machine is pretty rotted out, man. I mean, uh, the base of it's not even, the base of it's sitting on a womanized wood because the base of this box is rotted out, but all the electrical is up high, so it's no hazard yet that I could see. So, But right now we're working on a, we're working on this fitting back here, and this is the one that goes on it. You can see there's a big old chunk missing out of this ring. I don't want to have to replace this fitting, this 90, this gate valve, this 45, and add on some hose just because of the fact that I got one little chip in that. So we're going to try a new O-ring, which it has a groove on one side. I believe the originals didn't have a groove at all because it wore off, but one side's flat, one side has a groove. And I'm pretty sure... I'm not a hot tub expert, but if you feel up underneath this fitting, there is a groove around this. There's a groove underneath here, underneath this. So I'm pretty sure that groove, the raised groove, matches up with that. So this flat side goes down in the pump. So with that being said, we're going to... I'm going to go ahead and try to mount that in there. I'm not sure how much I can show you because it's hard to do this camera and work at the same time. So what I do is get the ring, the O-ring up in there good, because it fits that groove, pull the flange down over it, and hopefully it tries to stay in place till I can get my fitting over to it. And if you get it on there square, we should have success, hopefully. Yeah, it took a little finagling, but I think it's on there square now, and I don't got it good and hand tight but you really don't want to over tighten these and i found the best tool is get a pair of channel locks 460s is what i'm using so the pipe wrench is a little hard to finagle in here and you don't want to snug it up too much i already got a cracked fitting so so you just snug it down you can see it starting to straighten up so once I get it good and straightened up, I'm trying to save from having to replace that fitting so I don't have to replace all these other fittings just to fix this one. It might be good, I don't know. We'll see. I guess time will, test will tell with water. So trying to unwinterize this, putting it back together, getting it running again because everything was winterized. So you can see I got one more down here to do. But this one's not cracked, so this should be okay. I'm gonna hook back up filter hose to this to the heater tank. And here's your circulating pump. And we gotta work on the other side where the air jet pump is. So let's get this stuff hooked up. It's nothing hard about this, just hook the hose back up. Put another new gasket on that, tighten it up. Make sure all your valves are shut back off where you fill it up. You probably want these open to find out if it's leaking right away, but okay, we're gonna move on here. Let me get this stuff buttoned up and I gotta you gotta tighten your drain plugs down at the bottom too, because the drain plugs are been loosened. In the bottom of the pump motors there's the drain plug, so loosened all those, we'll have to tighten those back up. Alright, so I got this one reattached. That one's tight. Made sure I shut off my spigot. This pump one is not tight. So we'll do that real quick and then we're gonna jump over to the other side. Right, let's pop this. Pop this side off real quick.
Well, there you have it. This is your air jet. And I believe this one is your... One's the filter pump, and the other one's the, the water jet. And this is just your air. So let's go ahead and put a gasket on this one. Which you can see, it don't have one. And where my gaskets are, I don't know. Oh, I found them. Oh, look at that. There they are. There's the old ones down in here. That was the original. Just a flat one. I ended up getting two new ones of these. So. Go ahead and change this one. Make sure the surface is clean. Do a little better job cleaning that. I just used a straight uh, razor blade out of a uh, utility knife. Cleaned around there real good. Make sure there's no debris in the Make sure there's no debris in this canal. Alright. So they got that cleaned out. I think we should be good. There's no new gasket in there. No new gasket in there. Remember to put the groove side towards here. I found the best way is to shove it right inside the fitting. Push the fitting up tight. Shove it right in there. Right where you know it's going to be lined up. Hopefully. These are a pain in the... Pain in the... You know what? To get started. There we go. I think. Oh, shit. There she goes. Yeah. Just don't go on far once you get it right. I don't know. It feels like it's right down there, right? We'll put a pair of channel locks on it and see. Pretty tight. I'm gonna double check the double check the top one. Of course it's not on either. I guess it was a good thing I did get four, because I do need four. I thought I only needed three. Snug that one up. I don't like to get them too tight. It's all plastic threads, plastic everything. So you can see I had to go around this pump with silicone. It leaked at one point. And I'm sure that this is not completely tight, this plug. So we're going to snug that up. I'm going to start the filling process. Now if it's got water in it above the fill things, so far so good. I had one small drip here. I had to take it back apart. That's one thing nice about the gate valves. Shut off both gate valves. Took it back apart. Repositioned the gasket. Tighten it back up. I don't have no, no drips now. And I've already turned that pump on. It needs to be fuller, but it is pushing water through them. Same thing over here. Pretty happy to say that with my busted fittings up there, with the new gasket, and 
the new yeah the of course the new gasket and on both of them top and bottom in and out and I put this little bungee cord up here for security just to keep that sucker from bouncing around or moving too much with that cracked fitting so no leaks here which is good last year this thing leaked all the time it dripped, dripped, dripped right out of the bottom of that fitting there or actually it was coming down from that top one and dropping off the bottom down there but, so everything's good heater's working shows heater on so the heater's working tried the jets it's not a good time to not a good time to try them while the water's low but it's filled up down there at the bottom already the air's working Jet two for a split second. That's what I'm talking about, split second. And then jet one, same thing. That one got me wet. But yeah, it's all working. Put a couple bleach in there to help clean out all the lines and disinfect. So by the time she fills up, that should be diluted good enough. And we'll start with uh, bromine. So there you have it. 26 year old tub working again. I do need a, a new fitting on the part over there. It's one of the ones that rotate. That might be hard to come by. And a few new air jet caps that are missing. That one, some of them just pop off. I think you can buy replacements but she's up and running so hey if you got an old hot tub if this was helpful like and subscribe man because this one's running for another season <laughs>